man behind Boris Johnson, well, he's also behind a podcast that a spokesperson for Boris Johnson has branded being full of the usual total nonsense. And it's Gitto Harry, Boris's former Downing Street Director of Communications. Very good morning to morning. you. Morning. Yes, and you. Uh, we did ask, because you've made quite a lot of allegations about the kind of thing that uh, Boris Johnson has said while you were working for him. And so um, a spokesperson did dismiss it. Does, does that come as any surprise to you? Well, it depends what it is, yes. because there's a lot of revelations in this. What I'm trying to do, essentially, is to show what was going on behind the scenes, because if you were just watching the news last year, with some glorious exceptions, you'd think that the only thing that happened last year was this horrible thing called Partygate, and there was an awful lot going on, and yeah. Boris was beavering away really hard at a whole load of really important things, not least the Ukraine, and so this podcast is designed to show a little bit more and put Partygate in perspective. So actually it's a positive reflection of what Boris did? I think it's a fair reflection. So mm. some of the things that are made headlines, you know, mildly embarrassing, you know, name-calling foreign leaders and, you know, confrontation with uh, the current king, that kind of stuff, bound to make uh, headlines. But overall, I think that what I try to show is a man that was doing his best at the time. Well, you mentioned Partygate, Gitto. But you say on the podcast that Boris Johnson said that Sue Gray, who investigated Partygate, was planning an orgy of pain, abuse and humiliation and referred to her as the psycho. Yep, <laughs> psycho Sue Gray. <laughs> Landed well with Quentin over there. Um, Did he really? I mean, uh, sorry, if, go back to the spokesperson saying the usual total nonsense. Boris Johnson has no part in this podcast and does not endorse his con its contents. Um, is, did he really refer to Sue Gray like that? As psycho Sue Gray, yes. Um, and I think most, you know, established correspondents know that because um, they know that I kept notes of these things. But it was a moment of great tension. He was trying to sort of deal with war in Europe, but trying he... to get us from COVID into, as it happened, a cost-of-living crisis. But the notion with that, that he called her and gave her that name, would he have well, said we that and think... Let's but, but not Gita, be too precise here. What yes, do you, no, no, what no, do you no, say no. to your editorial That's not my question. My question people. is, yeah. do you think he would have done it if he'd known at some point you were going to release a podcast mm -hmm. or you were going to discuss the fact that he labelled her like that? I wouldn't have done it if he was still in power, but he's not. And so this is a retrospective, if you like. We look back at a very important period in recent British history, things have gone <clears> horribly <throat> wrong with our politics. We've had four prime ministers in four years. I think we're all trying to make sense of that. Mm. What was that about? Why did that happen? And I think it goes back, above all, to Brexit, tw uh, 2016, and the episode that will drop in six minutes' time, unprecedented, available on Global Player in six minutes' time, this one is on Brexit. And I think the seeds of the eventual demise of mm. Boris you know, were sown by that, as well as the shortcut that got him into power. He uh, famously wrote two essays on Brexit, one teasing out his support for staying in the EU and one teasing out his support for leaving the EU. And he decided on balance he wanted to leave. I mean, it is remarkable. He, he didn't yeah. really know what he felt about it. It's do not the most think... irrational way of deciding something, is it? You do a list of pros and a list of cons. And in his case, he adds the emotional impact of, a, of an article to a it. A lot so... of people think that, he th that, that if Boris Johnson had decided to back leave, it was because he thought it would mean he would end up Prime Minister. Well, that was the emotion. I think you know, Susanna, that I thought Brexit was an act of self-harm. It was a terrible mistake. I've never changed my mind. I'm very open about that in this podcast. I was surprised when mm. Boris, who grew up in Brussels, speaks many languages, I thought one of the most pro-European MPs ever did that. I was more surprised than anyone else. I tried to talk him out of it, which I detail. But I couldn't. And at this point, he clearly feels that there's the great big adventure for the UK of following this Brexit part. But I think it's becoming obvious to the rest of us that it's just not working. Do you think, in his heart of hearts, he really thinks it's a success and it was a good idea? Or do you no. think No. And again, I dwell on that a lot in this episode. That last year, I think it was starting to dawn on everyone that it wasn't working. And he grew more and more frustrated and was trying to do something about it. He tried mm -hmm. to unleash. Uh, William Rees-Mogg to sort of get rid of a whole load of European regulations. He wanted to change rules governing the insurance industry to unleash billions of pounds into the economy. But it didn't happen. It still hasn't happened. And so for all those people who voted for Brexit, <coughs> they're wondering what on earth that was for. And in terms of taking back control, we all know that the migration has gone through the roof the, uh, um, since Brexit. Yeah. Boris's uh, WhatsApps are at the centre of the COVID inquiry at the moment. Mm. He's quite keen to hand them over. The government's answer keen. You probably know what's in them. Are the government right to be nervous about 
than being handed over? I wasn't in number 10 during COVID itself, if you like, but I do know how prevalent uh, WhatsApp is and what a vital tool it is for government these days. To a large extent, we are governed by WhatsApp because things have to, decisions have to be taken Has so quickly. Has anyone got any reason to remotely. be embarrassed about all the WhatsApps? I think released? none of us would want our WhatsApps out there, even exchanges between lovely people like us on sets. You know, it's a big deal. And I think in all seriousness, we have to be able to sort of have candid conversations in government as we do in editorial meetings, was as he, we do in surgery. Was he, did he use language like the language that you've already mentioned in his WhatsApps with you, for instance? We all do. We all do, don't we? We all sort of, and, and, and the more tense the situation, and the I, more sorry, pressure I don't, you're under. I haven't used words like that. And the more WhatsApps pressure you're under, colleagues. then the more likely it is that you defuse them things using humour and, you know, mm. offloading... Um, can I ask, Gito, because um, I did an interview, of course, with yes, Boris Yes, I remember Johnson, it well. Uh, First interview for six last... years. First I thought interview... it was important that he talked to the audience here. Yeah. Um, how do you think he felt about that? Um, well, I think you knew on the day that he had bad food poisoning and just before coming on set with you, though we were in Mrs Thatcher's old study in Number 10, He'd been sick and sick over the lapel of his jacket. We had to change his jacket. And we had this sign that if he was going to throw up live on air, we'd try and spare that sort of horrible situation. So I must say, much as I adore you, Susanna, as you know, you're a bit brutal with a man who was feeling very under the weather at the time. Was he expecting Susanna to be anything less than no, the, the journalist not. that she is? No, no, she's a brilliant journalist, but yeah. it, was, it, was, it was almost violent. Really? <laughs> what, you think... No, so I, I no, was in told, all seriousness, I, I was think told before charge. the interview that perhaps he wasn't uh, 100%, but I didn't know was, what the circumstances... Very, uh, he'd just been throwing up, and so it was... So it are was you suggesting, one. Ito, that I should have gone easier no, no, on the Prime Minister of this country... Of course not. ..at a critical moment when we're at war with... Uh, or the Russia's invaded Ukraine. And, and we're heading into a cost of living crisis. We're cost of living crisis in the wake of Partygate. And you're saying that if I'm told that the Prime Minister has food poisoning, I should not ask him no, not difficult at all. questions. I'm just explaining why he was a little bit less uh, fierce in returning uh, your serve uh, than he would have been on a the, good day. The, the, the post-interview debrief, was it... What was it? We shouldn't have done that. Susanna was... Yeah, you, do you know what? The pace of stuff in number 10, which, again, I'm trying to convey mm. in this uh, podcast, he didn't go and have a big debrief. He went straight in to deliver a speech remotely to the Ukrainian parliament, uh, hooking up with President Zelensky. So there was barely didn't any Didn't he problem. go and address... Didn't, I thought he had a meeting of MPs before that. He probably did as well. I mean, every moment of the day was sort of round. Quentin Aisha. I almost called him Sir Gitto. Uh, yeah. but you're not going to be Sir anymore no. because this is the story about the uh, chop down to CBE. The resignation honours list. Disgraceful, you are so mischievous. Disgraceful yeah. uh, um, uh, business. I, but, also, um, I would say, look, I'm 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 very good to know, good friends. We've kind of hung out a lot in the past, but. I'm afraid I think what you've just sort of served up is, is absolute nonsense. I've worked in Downing Street as a press secretary as well. If your man or woman is not up, is not feeling well, then you say to the journalist, don't come in because they're not match fit today. I think kind of somehow insinuating that Susanna came in and give, gave this poor guy a kicking when he's down is really... No, and this is why people are so mistrustful of politics right now. And a lot of people do think that there's a, a too cosy relationship between the kind of government press side of things. Look, Susanna's job and any journalist worth their salt is to go in and hold the, the feet of the principal to, to the fire, particularly someone like Boris Johnson, who is known to be pretty lazy, be it charlatan, very elastic with the, the truth. So, go to as fond as I am of you, I, I do think, think that, that was very... Yeah, I think that was a bit of a... if you were told that somebody was uh, not feeling 100%, uh, would you go softer on them? Well, I'm not an interviewer. I'm, I'm a sketch writer, but, um, yes... I've, 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 I've never known you to go soft on anyone <laughs> yeah, in your oh, sketches. I, 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 I spoke up this week for a woman called Margaret Ferrier, who everyone else seems to hate, uh, Scott's Nat. Oh, MP. who travelled with So, uh, yeah, I think... I, I don't like um, uh, the sort of uh, the media gangbang against uh, uh, people sometimes. So, um, can I just, for the purposes of your audience and uh, editorial balance, say not everybody... Uh, dislikes Brexit. Some of us feel that we're relieved to be away from the heel of Brussels. And um, so let's just say that some of us... Do you think it's working? Yes, I do. Do you think people are feeling the benefits? I think they will. <laughs> do you and... think they wake up every day thinking we are more influential in the world, we are richer 
and we have more control over our borders? I think I they don't. possibly wake up and think, yippee, we don't uh, live yeah. under uh, the, the, the heel of Brussels Quentin, anymore. And that's also, just, just nonsense. Ca come on, this, just is, nonsense. this is a bit of I balance. don't know what you've no, been no. on this, this morning. You think balance. there's no problems with the country. And you they think say, people are really happy can I, about the state of Brexit. I'm, just, oh, I'm no, so sorry, I don't want honest. to bring it to We're, a close, but we are two minutes over seven o'clock. But Germany's economy is doing badly too. It must be because they left. And we have an opportunity for someone to wake up a winner. I've been uh, slightly under the weather <laughs> after a very oh, late night. Okay. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll go easy on you. We'll Aggie, go thanks easy for coming you. in and good luck with the podcast. Yeah, I unprecedented. Share as ever. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. <laughs>